Oh, good morning or good day. Uh, so I will continue uh, the IPM class uh, through webinars and uh, I'm going to create an assignment where you can upload photographs of your different insects, diseases and uh, weeds. Uh, so as you're going around, uh, take photograph. And I guess that's how we can continue with that assignment. Uh, so today we're going to begin talking about uh, diseases uh, and some of the problematic things that are going to come with that. And so we're going to start talking about nematodes. And that may be a new word for a lot of you, uh, but nematodes are going to be a slight problem. Uh, but before we get to the nematodes, let's just look at the screen and you have the different types of diseases that could be afflicting a plant. So we have some of the type of type, some types of molds like powdery mildew and leaf spot and blights. Uh, we'll talk about those later on uh, under plant diseases. Uh, and then we have wilts, uh, which are going to be infections that are going to be affecting the vascular system of the plant, preventing the water from going to the leaves and uh, up to the stems and all of that. Uh, we have the cankers that are going to be dead areas that will serve as a site for uh, the pathogen to live and possibly infect other parts of the plant. And then uh, those are things that you're going to see above the surface. Uh, right or below the surface, we can find some kind of galls. Uh, galls are going to be equivalent to a tumor on a uh, person or an animal. Uh, so plants do get some kind of tumors, which are going to be known as galls. Those can be also found on the leaves and our stems. And then uh, we have root rot, and that's going to happen because of lack of oxygen when plants get on a lot of water. And then we have root knots, which are going to be caused by some of the nematodes. So the nematodes that we are going to encounter here in California are going to be primarily soil-borne diseases or soil-borne uh, it's an animal, so it's treated as a disease, uh, but it's going to be caused by an animal. And here on the screen, we have an image from our microscopes that you saw in the previous weeks. And so here is the nematode right here that I extracted uh, from the soil. And then here is another one right here. If this was a video that I, I know I have, so I'll, I'll find it and I'll share it with you. Uh, you'll see that they move, so they will swim. Uh, so those are, or that is how you're going to see uh, the nematodes on a microscope. They cause a lot of problems uh, to, in agriculture. So most nematodes are going to be in the soil. Uh, but a few uh, in very dry, uh, wet areas like the tropics, they are going to be able to swim on a very thin film of water and they are going to be able to swim up and infect the leaves and or the stems of the plant. But that's where there's a lot of humidity. Around here, we don't necessarily have those problems with the uh, water. Uh, if you happen to get plants from Florida or in certain areas of the world, there might be a quarantine where you might not be able to get plants from those parts of the world because they might stop uh, or want to prevent an infection of this source to make it into California and they know that is found within those areas where you might get in your plants from. So you might see some quarantines that says, cannot be shipped to California, cannot be shipped to, uh, to Hawaii, cannot be shipped to Florida, because those are agricultural countries and uh, something like this could be really bad for them. So nematodes are very, very common. Uh, they are, can be defined as an unsegmented round worm, or sometimes they're referred to as eel worms because that's how they're going to see when you just, they're going to see when you're, they're going to be swimming. And here is another photograph that I took 
with a monocular that I have on campus where I was able to uh, get it in the right area and I took a photograph. Uh, so they are found in the water, they are found on the ground, they are found uh, every place on earth as uh, nematodes. Uh, some of them are going to be pathogenic to people, like we've seen with some insects. Some of them are going to be pathogenic to animals. Some of them are going to be pathogenic to plants, so they're going to feed on plants. And uh, the vast majority are going to be free living in the ground, feeding on bacteria, feeding on fungi, feeding on anything else that they, uh, they can catch. Uh, so they need a film of water to really swim or move around. So one of the ways that they can spread is by having a fluff. Water moves from one area to the other, carries a bunch of those nematodes to the new location, and they become established. So some of those floodings that could occur here could potentially move them around. If they do not find a plant or on, on the plant pathogenic nematodes, if they do not find a plant to feed on, they can go on a hibernation. So they're going to go into a, a cyst. So they'll create a shell around them or a covering where they're going to remain nice and, and I guess warm and moist. And they're going to wait. Uh, they're going to wait until the roots of the plant get within a close proximity where the roots are naturally going to exude uh, compounds called the plant exudates. Uh, and it is those exudates, chemicals, that will trigger them to wake up because that lets them know that there is a plant in the vicinity where they can start to feed and they can start to eat. So they can survive for many, many, many years uh, in the absence of plants. And there are plants that are resistant to them. And there are plants that are really sensitive to them. And, uh, once again, if the population number gets really high, then they're going to overwhelm the plant by literally destroying the roots uh, and not allowing the plant to drink water and or any of the other necessary components. So when we look at the anatomy of the nematode, it's very going to be very simple. So we're going to have uh, a stylet. So once again, this will be for the plant parasitic nematodes. As we learn with insects, they have a modified mouth that is going to be a needle-like. And so the mouth is going to be retracted. And when it's going to be needed, it's going to be forcefully ejected. And it's going to literally stab the plant. And uh, it's going to drink the sap and all the resources. Uh, that is going to be the mouth part of the nematode. The mouth part is right here that is then going to be connected to the stomach and then to the digestive system and then to the excretory system or the rear end of uh, this worm. So very, very, very simplistic. When we're dealing with nematodes, uh, there's going to be two forms that are going to be affecting the plants or two types, I guess. Uh, there's going to be exterior feeders. So the ones that are just going to be in the soil, they're going to approach the root they're going to stab it, they're going to drink, and then they're going to kind of go away. Or there's going to be interior feedings, uh, feeding nematodes, the ones that are going to go inside the root. So they're going to force their way, tunnel their way into the root system. And they're going to be moving around the root, causing a lot of damage. And uh, they're going to be feeding as they move into the plant. So exterior or interior uh, depending on the type and the feeding habits. So those, that's good, something good for you to know because when you start looking at problems, you can see the outside and or the inside. Uh, so that's the nematode. But like I said, nematodes are found everywhere. If you were to take the planet Earth and remove everything out of uh, all the land, remove all the water, remove everything from the planet, but keep every single nematode that is in existence. Uh, they say that if they, we are able to do that, you would still be able to see your house or find your house, your address, uh, just on the nematodes themselves, because that's how plentiful they are. So they're everywhere. So if you have never heard of the plant feeding nematodes, 
perhaps you might have heard about some of the human uh, types. Uh, so the pinworms, those are going to be nematodes that are going to be found uh, feeding on humans. Uh, so many of them can be afflicting your eyes. Many of them are going to be serious problems in the tropics, not so much around here. Uh, so they'll have a life cycle. Uh, usually the ingestion uh, or when people ingest them is going to be in an egg stage. And then uh, it is the chemicals inside our stomach that will allow the egg to hatch. And from there, the insect is gonna be feeding inside our stomach on us. And uh, as it uh, comes time for it to uh, mate, it's gonna find a female and then they're gonna mate. The female will then uh, lay the eggs and those will be excreted by the human and then somehow it's gonna be passed on to the next individual. So pinworms uh, are gonna be a problem for animals as well as for people. So that is a type of nematode and you can see here the female and the male uh, nematodes. Uh, the other one is gonna be the hookworm. Uh, the hookworm is gonna be a problem with humans uh, and uh, this would be one of the reasons why uh, they do not recommend that uh, people defecate in the ground or if uh, you're gonna be walking in an area where people have defecated, then do not walk barefooted because it's gonna be injected or excreted by the human through its feces. And uh, the egg is gonna hatch and it's gonna wait until a human or an animal happens to go by. Uh, when they feel your movement, uh, they're going to then go through your skin onto your leg and from your leg, they're going to move up onto your stomach system and potentially if they go to your brain, that would be a big problem. Uh, so the hookworm, which is also affecting cats and dogs, could also be a problem. And then you might have heard about trichonella or the fact that we need to cook pork very well. And if pork is not cooked well, uh, pork pigs are known to have nematodes that can go on human. Uh, so on a pig, it could be an incyst. Uh, so it's gonna be dormant inside the flesh of the animal. And if you do not cook it well and you happen to eat that contaminated flesh, uh, once it's in your stomach, then uh, you're go it's going to hatch, it's going to continue growth, and then it's going to feed on you, and that's going to uh, be increasing the problem. So <clears throat> the reason why we need to cook uh, pork well is to avoid uh, trichinella or this nematode that normally found on pigs but can also go to humans. Uh, and uh, the heartworm, if you have a pet, you might have to treat him uh, constantly for heartworm. So the heartworm, mem heartworm uh, medicine, uh, that is a nematode that is transmitted through uh, mosquitoes. So when a mosquito feeds on an infected animal, it's going to carry the nematode within its uh, mouth part or inside stomach. And as it feeds, uh, or it's going to carry the larva or the egg. And as it feed on another animal, it's going to transmit it. Or if it happens to feed on a human, then it's going to infect it as well. And it's going to go to your heart. And uh, it's going to literally destroy the heart of the animal or the heart of a human, deform it, and do a bunch of other ugly stuff. Uh, so the heartworm is uh, another form of a nematode. Uh, and uh, the filarious flisis. Uh, uh, so some nematodes uh, in the tropics call, is cause what is known as elephantism. Uh, so the grotesque growth of uh, body parts. So the nematodes will have uh, chemicals that will force the cells to multiply and elongate. And so it is transmitted by a mosquito. So once again, it feeds on an infected animal. And uh, if it happens to then feed on a human and infect it, uh, then you have such a drawing right here uh, where the leg has grown to a gigantic size and 
It's if you want to see some really ugly pictures, I welcome you to Google them because it's kind of ugly. So elephantism uh, caused by another nematode, but problem in the tropics. So for us, uh, this is just a drawing of uh, the plant feeding nematode. So once again, plant feeding nematodes are going to have a stylet, so that needle-like mouth parts. And then it's going to have uh, the muscle to be able to forcefully eject it. And then it's going to have just the intestinal, the ovary, and the eggs, and the rest. Uh, so you can see a very simplistic uh, life cycle uh, of the male and the female. So the males are not really necessary. They may just, the female can produce eggs without being fertilized. Uh, so uh, they're just going to be around. And so here is uh, a magnification of the mouth with the stylet and the lips and the other, other regions uh, for you to see. Uh, so if I were to take a big magnification uh, or a zoom magnification, this is how they look. They're going to be transparent. Uh, so it's always nice to have a, like a nice black background if you have a you know, view under the microscope. And so here you can see some of the soil particles, but you can see the stylet, the mouth, and uh, the rest of the nematodes. Uh, here is uh, my photograph uh, that I was able to take with that monocular, so I can show you just that. So here's the end or the tip of that stylet, uh, and then the rest of the parts that we see. Uh, and from Google, uh, pirated photograph, here is where the nematode has ejected that stylet and it has stabbed the root of a plant and that is the vascular system and so it's able to probe and uh, reach the vascular system to drink the sap and uh, uh, cause the, the problem so that's a nematode mouth. Uh, these are just some examples uh, of uh, the different types and the sizes of the nematodes uh, so a few of them, the females, once they have uh, latched themselves to a root, they will then uh, begin to grow and they will hide all the eggs within them. Uh, those can be seen with the naked eyes. Uh, those are going to be uh, sedentary. So once they find a root, that's it. They're not going to move around. But uh, pretty much all the others are going to either be migratory, moving outside the roots, or they're going to be interior feeder, feeders. Uh, so there's some of the examples of the different types of plant feeding nematodes that are all out there from some of them very large to some of them very, very minute. Uh, here's just uh, some photographs. And this is from uh, the IPM site uh, that I'll put a link to the nematodes area. So this is just lettuce. Uh, on the left side, we have one that the root system has been completely destroyed. So as new roots develop, that is prime area for the nematodes to feed on. And so they will keep on injuring the roots until the roots is completely gone and the plant is not able to take water and it's going to have some kind of wilting problem. So that's going to be the first symptom. A symptom is how the plant is responding to a problem. Uh, so the symptom is going to be wilting because of the lack of roots for absorbing water. So wilting, the foliage is going to wilt, is going to be one of your first symptoms. So from here, you can start looking at what are some of the possible problems. And if nothing else, we can uproot the plant and try to extract the nematodes to verify that it is in fact being caused, the problem is being caused by them. Here are just some of the common nematodes and some of the common uh, plants that they feed on, just so that you can see. So we have the root knot nematode. So this causes all of those deformations on the roots, and then feeding on them and deforming them. That also affects potatoes, beets, and barley. Uh, we have the cyst nematode. That Those are the cysts, so it's going to kind of feed and remain attached to the outside of the plant. Uh, we have lesion nematodes that will literally cause a lot of damage and lesions to uh, the roots. We have some nematodes that are going to feed on balls like onions and, and uh, tulips and a bunch of other things and some including some uh, potato. 
uh, uh, we have seed gall nematodes. Those nematodes that feed on the seeds, as well as nematodes that feed on the foliage, as this chrysanthemum foliar nematode. Uh, and then our corn starvy root uh, rot, banana browning nematode, and then uh, dagger nematode, bean uh, sting nematode, and uh, uh, or the other symptom uh, is going to be the stunting of the plant. So stunting because it's robbing the resources. It is a parasite, so the plant is not going to have resources for growth and or decline. So you see a plant that was looking very nicely and all of a sudden it starts to not look as well and uh, it's going to have a decline on its health and then uh, you can start looking for potential problems. So a couple more examples. And so here's uh, the life cycle. Uh, this is uh, one of the root knot nematodes. Uh, so they're going to be hatched from an egg. The egg is going to be produced by a female that has uh, kept them and when she dies they're going to be released into the soil move around through the water when they feel the exudates from the plant or when they sense them they're going to hatch uh, they're going to mold several times throughout their life cycle until they become an adult and then uh, they're going to go to a plant and uh, they're going to feed on it uh, once they begin to feed they're not going to go anywhere they're just going to remain there and they're going to keep on growing and expanding. Eventually, uh, they're going to mate and uh, uh, they're going to keep on giving birth to more nematodes. Uh, so the roots will have some of them present on the outside. Uh, here is uh, the resulting root uh, that has some of the nematodes feeding on it right now. And or you see the damage where it just has a grotesque or kind of like a deformed uh, shape to it. Uh, the lesion nematode is going to be a interior feeder. So it's going to force its way into the root. So it's going to hatch like any other uh, animal. Uh, so uh, the nematode. And then it's going to force its way into the root. As it's forced its way into the root, it's going to start uh, killing the cells, eventually creating uh, areas, wounds that may be get infected as more nematodes move in and or are hatch, uh, then the damage is going to be greater until the root system is completely rotted or it is going to be an entry site for other pathogens that might be killing or may kill your, the plant. Uh, so that's the lesion nematode. Uh, the bulb nematode affecting onions. Uh, it's going to do something very similar. So it's going to force its way into the bulb and it's just going to move around, eat, and uh, destroy the entire, uh, the entire bulb. Or it may also affect some of the seedlings uh, if they happen to be in the close proximity. Uh, or the cyst nematode. Uh, this is uh, one that you will see. Uh, the size is about the, uh, the pin, that's uh, the head of a pin. So you will be able to see it with uh, your naked eye. Uh, please do not confuse the nematodes with some of the root nodules that you might find on some of the legumes. So members of the bean family, like alfalfa beans, they have a specialized nodule in the root. So it's a small tumor where they house a bacteria or an algae that allows them to uh, fix the nitrogen and uh, get some fertilizer or, or vitamins and minerals. So that is natural part of uh, the biology of some plants. However, uh, those can be confused with the uh, cyst nematode or the cyst nematodes can be confused by a, for a root nodule. So be very careful. So here's where the female keeps the eggs inside. She'll die and she'll retain them. Uh, the youngs are going to hatch, they're going to burst through their, uh, the female's body, they're going to find another root, uh, they're going to go inside or feed, and then they're going to engorge and become really big, and eventually the cycle will continue, uh, and they'll move on and uh, infect their roots. Here's uh, how the females will look when they are already big and full. And here is the root. So you can see just below the bark uh, of the root, you have the nematode. Here's another one. And here's when you extract them, that's how they look. So 
that is the engorged body with uh, the head and the mouth part. Uh, and that's uh, how they look if you were to see uh, a root or uh, unearth a root. So those very tiny dots, those are the nematodes. And uh, I also mentioned the nodules. So you have the nodules that are normal part of uh, the plant, uh, but you also have the cyst nematodes that are the problem. And that's how they look in a higher magnification. So even though there's some plant parasitic nematodes, some human parasitic nematodes. Uh, they are also sold, uh, some of the beneficials are sold as a way to control grubs in the soil. Uh, so some of the predatory nematodes, when they're in the soil, they're gonna look for grubs or eggs from uh, either beetles or grasshoppers. So biologically, that's one way that they are controlled. Uh, so the nematodes are going to first force their way into uh, some kind of grub. They're going to feed from uh, the inside. Eventually, they'll kill the grub, not allowing it to become an adult. And uh, eventually, they'll reproduce and become a greater in number. Uh, so there are, those are available. Uh, they come in a box such as this. Uh, so you purchase them. Uh, you get a, a bunch of uh, nematocyst uh, that you will then mix with water and then you will drench the soil. So you drench the soil where you think there is a problem with grubs. And this would be the case if you were dealing with a golf course where grubs can be affecting some of the grass or uh, some other very expensive uh, garden. Uh, so they're out there if you uh, have a need for them. So with that, I will post uh, this uh, uh, in a few minutes. Uh, I will also open uh, the discussion area so that if you have any questions, then uh, you can let me know. Or if you wanna see this as it's been recorded, as I'm recording it, uh, I can also schedule you to, during the normal time, nine in the morning on Fridays if you want. Uh, or you can view it later on uh, as a recording uh, webinar. So that's it for nematodes. So have a good day.